<laughs> Hello one and all, this is so for Lordy. James Bullock once again with another video game That's first really impressions. Good. This time around, life is strange true colors. For the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, oh. Xbox One, That's Xbox Series X and S, PC, Google Stadia, and eventually the Nintendo Switch. True Colors is the continuation of the Life is Strange I'm cool franchise. The you are. And just like Life is Strange 1 and 2, True Colors follows the events of a brand new character, <laughs> Alex Chen. A young girl who's been bounced around from foster family to foster family. So good to see you. And now has the chance to reunite with her long lost brother Gabe as she moves into the Colorado town of Haven Springs. Now just like the previous Life is Strange games, Alex does have a power. Unlike, say, Max having the ability to turn back time in Life is Strange 1, Alex it. has the ability to feel the emotions of certain characters. Some may be local huh? town folk who are worried about their ice cream shop failing. And of course the NPCs that you get to know and potentially love. And so much like the previous Life is Strange games, this game is really built on characterization. It's built on getting to know these characters, getting to know their world, and hopefully becoming attached both emotionally and in the case of Alex physically to what is Haven Springs. Now there's a big twist at the end of the first chapter. And unlike, once again, the previous Life is Strange games, this game is a full release. Unlike the other Life is Strange games, this is not episodic in nature. With Alex's ability to feel the emotions of people, she's also able to utilize her powers to solve puzzles, mostly mental in nature, such as trying to figure out a song that's on a jukebox that a girl just can't figure out what the name of it was, or someone that is potentially suffering from dementia, trying to retrace their steps and helping them remember what is going on in their life at that time. It's a very interesting method and a very interesting power that when first announced I didn't know how to really get excited about it. It's not being able to rewound time or having telekinesis. But it works masterfully well especially with the presentation of the story. Now I do not want to spoil one of the big moments that happens pretty early in the story, really in the first couple of hours, that changes the whole dynamic of not only Alex's journey but the entire town as a whole. And the thing about it, when it comes to Life is Strange, not only this one, but the previous games, there's not much to talk about in terms of gameplay. It is a point and click adventure where you go around the area, try to find items that will either be collectibles or help you progress through the story, and really that's it. So if you're one of those people that always waited until the game got almost every episode released before you played it, this is perfect for you because now you can play it all at one time. He and to me, the story actually benefits from it because in like the other games, in the episodic Life is Strange games or games like it, the developers would have to put this big cliffhanger moment at the end of each episode to encourage you to buy the next episode. This feels like the story has more time to breathe and flows a lot more naturally than, to me, the episodic experiences because you don't have to be so heavy handed in trying to present a big cliffhanger or big knockout moment at the end of a chapter. Technically, the game has definitely had some issues. For me personally, I've only had one real big issue with the game, and that is the inability to see the world stats of my choices. At the end of each chapter, you're shown the choices that you've made, and you're supposed to be able to see all the stats that the other players around the world have chosen in a percentile. Unfortunately, no matter the first chapter or the second chapter that I've completed thus far, I've been able to see this and I've seen other people complain about the same problem. But for other players, they have witnessed graphical glitches, things not working properly, NPCs that can't be interacted with that should be, and a lot of technical problems associated with this game upon release, especially on the PlayStation 4 version. From an aesthetic perspective, the game looks fantastic. It definitely has that Life of Strange art style that we've all come to know and love mostly. The music is fine. It has that indie vibe, some of lo-fi, quote-unquote hard rock. Certain Life is Strange games definitely have, and it continues on with this one. Overall, there's not much to say about Life is Strange True Colors that can't be said about the previous Life is Strange games other than the fact that you have a new character with a different set of powers, and thankfully a full-blown package instead of an episodic release. If, to me, you enjoyed the first Life is Strange, 
more than you enjoyed the second one. I think you will enjoy this a lot more. I think if you enjoyed the second one a lot There's more than the first one, this may be a little bit more disappointing. Oh. So there you have it. This has been oh. so hopeful, Lordy. James Bullock, once again, with I another video game first impressions. Life is Strange, True I Colors. For the PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5, then. Xbox One, Xbox Series X, NS, PC, enough, Google Stadia, and eventually maybe, Nintendo sad. Switch. Now, if you don't mind, I have a kid over here that's a little bit down right now. And the only way to get his spirits up is by doing some live action role playing. So, of course, we're confronted by a wolf that we have to take down. And if this wolf doesn't have any loot on it, it will have no choice but to say, Oh, Lordy.